Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health Radio on TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and I can only say this for a few more days, a busy mom of three teenagers, because one of those teenagers is turning 20. Oh my goodness. I believe that your body does want to and is capable of rebuilding and healing itself, regardless of what chronic disease you may have. And I'm here for you to answer your questions bring you innovative and cutting edge technologies and health solutions to empower you and your ability to reach your optimal state of health. Today, one of my favorite human beings is back, uh, Terry Cochran, and she will be talking about individualized nutrition and how some of the wrong healthy foods and the wrong supplements could be causing weight gain, hormonal imbalances, and keeping your body from detoxing the proper way. Even me, I am all in to detox and I was taking things that were actually backing up my liver and backing up my detox um, pathways. So if your physical body is functioning at a low level and it's hard to have the energy mentally and to raise your frequency or vibration and heal yourself, whether it's overcoming anxiety and depression, which so many people are suffering from right now, just did a podcast yesterday on addiction and dopamine. So if you missed that, make sure you check that one out. It will help you understand your anxiety and depression, especially if it is risen in the last couple of years, uh, losing weight, detoxing your body in the proper way, and even increasing that level of frequency. You need that strong physical foundation of health in order to gain the willpower to make the bigger changes in your life. If you're new to following me, I specialize in helping you get there. Like I said, you can find everything at sarabantahealth.com. All of my protocols, natural supplements, devices, that is where we find everything. I have over 200 articles, lots of podcasts, education through my expert guests and also myself. I'm able to bring you more cutting edge content and guests to the show as you support my website. First, before Terry comes on, I want to talk about some tools that you can use to help with your mental health, physical health, and truly live your best life. And the goal to is improve mitochondrial health and increase that energy at the cellular level so the neurons are firing, leading to reversed aging in the body, mind, and spirit. The first supplement is Accelerated Silver. This is the supplement that truly started my business as it helped my son who's now 20, at the age of nine, overcome leukemia. And since then, I can tell you that boy has not been on antibiotics, he has not missed a day of school, and neither have his two younger sisters. Accelerated scalar silver is enhancing your immune system's ability to devitalize foreign pathogens, including bacteria, viruses, fungus, and parasite. And if your immune system is bombarded with fighting foreign pathogens, it cannot simultaneously engage in those anti-aging mechanisms or autoimmune issues. And by keeping that immune system strong, the body engages in those anti-inflammatory processes leading to optimal health. It also is the only silver that is enhanced with scalar frequencies and goes through a water implosion technology. No other silver product does this. Um, so it is very, very specific, the accelerated scalar silver. And with that, you have the accelerated keto. And this flips you into fat burning mode within 30 minutes and your body taps into its own fat stores for energy right away. As we're going to learn today, the keto diet, the high fat diet may not be right for you, but you still can utilize the accelerated keto in a way to target your fat burning, your liver health, and some other things as well. You truly feel great physically and mentally that first day, and you've got this feeling like, I can do this. When the body is running on ketones produced by the accelerated keto, 
combined with intermittent fasting and a low carb diet focusing on wild animal protein, ATP production increases significantly in the mitochondria and that mitochondrial biogenesis is optimized. What does that mean? You feel better. You feel better, more energy physically and mentally. We also have some additional ingredients in the accelerated keto that breaks down the saturated fats into unsaturated fats. And those are easier for the body to utilize and easier for the body to convert into ketones. So when you're fasting, the body fat's more readily available to burn for energy. And you also increase the autophagy mechanisms. Because of this, the accelerated keto is able to defat the liver as well. And it's well known that the liver is responsible for converting stored fat into ketones. And we got to love our liver. The person's liver, as it's more defatted and unclogged, it's easier for it to function in all areas, including detox, including breaking down fat molecules into usable energy and increasing that mitochondrial biogenesis. It's also where the thyroid hormones convert from T4 to T3. And that, as that improves, increased metabolism, mitochondrial function, and energy improve. It also has HMB in it, which actually helps prevent muscle wasting. And as a 46-year-old woman, I know how important that expensive muscle is that we want to keep. The other ingredients in there increase um, that fire the, in the Ayurvedic medicine. We call it the fire element potency, and it, hel it helps increase that match that lights the keto process. It also detoxifies the body and the liver. So you can also include the acceleridine iodine. And iodine is not just for the thyroid. Acceleridine is needed for every 100 trillion cells in the body. The number one reason for mitochondrial failure and for depression is iodine deficiency. Thyroid hormones must attach to the mitochondrial and mitochondrial as well as the nucleus of the cell have thyroid hormone receptors. So it's really important to recognize that acceleridine is different from every other iodine on uh, the planet. It is the only 100% absorbed iron or iodine that is scalar enhanced to detox the body of halogens, radiation, and other heavy metals intracellularly, it's producing energy. Extracellularly, it is acting as an antioxidant, anti-allergenic, it detoxifies, it's vasodilating, it helps with autoimmune issues, and it induces apoptosis. So it's super important for pregnant women and children because they are going through that vast amount of apoptosis, that pro programmed cell death where they're growing. It is truly needed for brain function, physical performance, wound healing, fat burning, and uh, like I mentioned, the apoptosis. So with that, you can use the accelerated ancient salt. Most salts are stripped of all of the other minerals and they're full of microplastics. It is essential to have a full, complete um, salt to emulsify and stimulate digestion, hydrate the cells, especially when you're fasting. It has a strongly negative charge to this salt to help pull out the positively charged toxins, parasites, and undigested fats. A lot of my clients notice that when they're feeling nauseous, maybe their liver's backed up in their gallbladder, just by putting the accelerated salt on their tongue, the nausea goes away, the headaches go away. Headaches come with some detox symptoms, right? The accelerated ancient salt matching with the acceleridine is a, is a perfect balance to help rehydrate the cells in the proper way. And it is too enhanced with scalar frequencies to help reorganize the DNA. So there are a few of my tips and tools, but I give more of those through my free group coaching on Telegram. You can join with the link below or email me through sarahbantahealth.com. The difference between me and any other group coaching is I provide the most cutting edge frequency enhanced supplements that work synergistically with each other. And your body doesn't experience those flu-like symptoms you 
truly do feel great day one. Leave a comment below if you're interested or check it out on the website, sarahbantahealth.com. Now to the good stuff. Terry Cochran is back. She's the founder of the Global Sustainable Health Institute and an international thought leader in longevity. Through her decades of clinical work, she has developed the Cochran Method, a future-facing multi-system health and longevity model, model. And this model examines the intersection of gene expression due to pathogenic and environmental causes. And boy, do we have those right now. Energy and her client's unique blueprint. She specializes in solutions to complex health conditions and serves world-class athletes. Terry, welcome back. How are you? Hi, Sarah. So good to be with you again. I can't, I mean, our talks could go for hours and hours, and that's why we have to have you back on and on, and especially as the world is changing. Um, real quick, why don't you just give the basic fundamentals of what your philosophy is based on to those who are new to you? So my philosophy is there's no one supplement or one food for everyone. And even within our own genetic blueprint, there's dynamism in terms of how our body may be operating, especially for women as they're cycling or in the seasonal aspects of environmental toxins. And of course, in this pandemic where there's an ever-changing landscape to how our body is responding to uh, this external a milieu of um, pathogenic load. Absolutely. And that's where I want to start. Um, first, to go through the four disruptors that you talk about, and then how well, I want to get into how the stress of um, the fear base, so all the fear and the stress that we're under, how that could change what foods are healthy for you, even for the same person, where one season it's okay, one season it's not, um, how that can change, and also how the virus is disrupting all of us, regardless if you've had it, not had it, been around people who've had it, whatever it is. So let's first start with the four disruptors. All right. Well, the wildatarian tenants are eating to your genetic blueprint and your current state of health based on the four disruptors that I have identified as protein malabsorption, fat malabsorption, sulfur malabsorption, and oxalate malabsorption. And in particular, protein malabsorption has become a really big deal in that we know that our food supply is creating in the tissues of animals, in particular chicken and beef, chicken being the most studied, these indigestible proteins by the name of amyloids. And these amyloids are actually multiple fold problem makers. One, because they can't break down and we need our, our protein to break down into amino acids so we can make tendons and hormones and glucose and all sorts of things. And then we have the aspect of these amyloids actually reactivating pathogenic loads. So we know that amyloids will build biofilm. Biofilm protects pathogens and they become a feeder system for autoimmunity. And that's truly one of the tenets of the wildatarian diet. So protein malabsorption, if you're not eating wild, and I'm saying especially in this pandemic, because now there's some clinical literature that shows that the CV, however you get it, however you're exposed, can actually build amyloid plaque. So we don't want to continue fueling it. And I say not wild is non-negotiable. You have to be wild right now. You have to consume those lower amyloid meats and fish. Fish don't contain amyloids, but lower meats and poultry, because otherwise you're creating a feeder system or something that's already endemic. The second thing is fat. So why is fat such a big deal? Well, we're told to eat keto. We're told to eat paleo. Well, buyer beware because fat is also the stress hormone of epinephrine and cortisol. And if we're pushing it, especially in this environment, especially if we have genes of the MTHFR C677T polymorphism, which is how we recycle hormones, how we make bile salts, how we build neurotransmitters. If you're eating a heavy keto diet, you could actually be backing up your liver. You could be backing up your lymphatic system. You could be backing up your gut. You could be breaking through the intestinal barrier. So Fat malabsorption, when there is stress and or genetic tendencies and both and or both, then we have to be mindful of fat and keto could be, I, we say, be kicking your butt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we have the sulfur piece and the sulfur relates to 
how we make neurohormones, how we build the mucin layer in our gut, how we manage our cognitive function, how we manage our neurotransmitters. It has so, so many valuable functions. However, the glyphosate, which is roundly sprayed on our crops, it's the, it is the active ingredient in Roundup, has inhibited the body's ability to convert sulfur to sulfate. Sulfate is what we need. And we're getting stuck in a sulfur spinning wheel. And this is from the genius work of Dr. Stephanie Seneff who, out of MIT, who's proven it over and over again. When that happens, sulfur can leak your gut, can give you support arthritis, can support ulcerative colitis, can support the making of crystals with oxalates, which I'll talk about in a minute, but we have, it can be linked to heart disease. It is just head to toe problematic. And so eating those healthy sulfur rich foods like kale, as I call killer kale or broccoli or cabbage or cauliflower in an environment where sulfur is a problem can be a problem for you. I'm one of those, I have sulfur impairment. When I was eating high sulfur foods, I was really feeling arthritic, I could barely walk. Now I don't eat sulfur foods, I, I dance with them, but they're not my favorite foods because my gut is healed and sealed. And the last piece of it is oxalates. And why are oxalates such a, what, what are oxalates first of all? And why are oxalates such a problem? Well, oxalates are a protective coating that live on plants. And they are found in blueberries and in almonds and in black beans and in many nuts and in spinach and beets. And beets are really good for nitric oxide, but they're also high in oxalate. And oxalates, again, due to the roundup in large part, and if we have certain oxalate metabolism impairment genes, these oxalates can become oxalate crystals that can attach to your arteries. Oxalate crystals are known to create stones, kidney stones, gallstones, but also thyroid nodules, neuromas, lipomas. There are so many omas that the oxalates can create, and it has been linked to disrupting dopamine metabolism because oxalate is tied to building mold, which builds candida, which feeds the strep, which then can cause all sorts of autoimmune psychiatric disorders. PANDAS has been tied, PANDAS, which is pediatric autoimmune psychiatric disorder, has been tied to impaired oxalate metabolism. Why? Because these oxalates are feeding fungal and pathogenic loads of strep and candida. So Eating healthy foods, depending on what your genetic blueprint is, what your current state of health is and what the environment is, is really kicking our butts. And I will say there are many green powders out in the marketplace, one in particular who's become very popular that is full of sulfur, oxalates, and even mycotoxins. Mushrooms are considered mycotoxins or fungal organisms when we have a high fungal environment and we have an oxalate metabolism impairment, that's a problem. That's a problem. So people come to us, they're, they're barely walking, their stomach is a mess, they're bloated, they're depressed. Some of them have become anxious, some of them are manic. And it could be because they're eating healthy foods that are literally having such, it's, it's like a ninja to your DNA in the very worst ways. <laughs> and so we really want to, we really want to share with your audience, know your genes, tendencies, know your tendencies, understand what your body is doing and apply that methodology appropriately so you can live a vibrant life. Even in an environment where things are seeming to be backwards and upside down, we can still be very vibrant. Okay. So I have a couple questions that are new. You're talking about the CV actually producing amyloids in the body. Can you explain that? Because in my mind, I can only get amyloids by ingesting them through chicken or whatever that is. And then I have to, I have to tell you about a funny story. Um, everyone out there in the keto world, in the natural health world, even the most, and I'm not going to drop any names, but there is a very famous, one of the top podcasters who I was listening to this morning and he's into Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine. And he's telling you for acne, for young kids, eat chicken skin. And I'm sitting there going, oh my goodness, this is the absolute wrong thing. But he is very popular. And so people come to me thinking, well, I'm, I eat the, I eat chi the chipper chicken. It's the, it's the healthy white meat. So I just wanted to throw that in that you really have to be careful who you're listening to yes. just because they're very popular does not mean they know what they're talking about. And that's what I love about Terry, because 
when I came to her, my, my own self, I was bloated. I was eating all the wrong um, low calorie ketogenic vegetables and foods, totally bloated, mind issues, um, all of these things. And as soon as I changed to what she told me to eat, I felt like a million bucks. And then it was like, okay, you, you know, you have this whole lease on life. Mm -hmm. You may in your mind think that you are being restricted by what she's telling you to eat. But when you have the energy mentally and physically, it's the most freeing thing. It's absolutely the opposite of being restricted. So just wanted to throw that in there, but let's get back to the question on the, the, the virus actually triggering a buildup of amyloids. Yeah. So, so amyloids can be both endogenous, meaning they're made in the body or exogenous. So what's really fascinating is these preliminary clinical uh, reports are showing that because viruses feed on protein, there are some initial studies that show that these viruses can be increasing the amyloid burden in the body. And so we know in the best case scenario, in a body made of balance, we make, we make amyloids that are, I call them their homeostatic mechanisms. They're rebalancers because that homeostasis will, that homeostatic mechanism goes to, you're going to create an, you're going to make an endogenous amyloid. That amyloid is going to cause an inflammatory response and that inflammatory response in the body answers it by putting an anti-inflammatory agent in place and therefore you get back to balance. That's not happening anymore. And so these, these now endogenous amyloids with the, the proteins, uh, the spike protein are creating a burden, a potential burden. And so why? Well, because clots can be amyloid burden, right? The, it, these in, um, interleukin-6, which is an inflammatory cytokine, is actually really interesting. It's it's a it's a histamine response, which is creating an inflammatory cytokine, which is then potentially creating supporting the buildup of amyloids. And when we're when we are now consuming these amyloids from the the food structure, we are adding a burden to a body that it cannot manage. It cannot manage this burden. We actually just had a gentleman in our practice who. He was doing so well, we did put him back on his amyloid-based foods. And within a month, he was back to being dysglycemic. He'd gained a few pounds. He was very much foggy-headed, and we had to put him back on wild. And so we're seeing more and more of that. I know personally, this is really a fascinating story. Um, I, everyone, 99, they say that 99% of the population has been exposed in some way or another. I have a continuing glucose monitor that I use, a CGM device, so it manages my blood sugar. Because my dad used to be, was a type one diabetic who became one in adulthood. I've really always been very, very careful about my blood sugar and my hemoglobin A1C. Now, my insulin has always been beautiful. My hemoglobin A1C is a rock star at 4.9. My blood sugar has always been in perfect, that, that sweet spot as I call it. However, post COVID, I started becoming very, very foggy headed and, and, and I actually started gaining a little weight and I, I, I just happened to have a continuing glucose monitor to measure my metabolic flexibility. And I started watching my blood sugar literally fall like a rock. I was able to manage um, that through, not through giving myself sugar, that doesn't work, but through a combination of an adrenal support and vitamin D acting as a pre-peptide to manage my blood glucose. That really helped me. Every time I had beef, and this happened three different times, even though it was pasture fed, my blood sugar tanked again. Mm -hmm. So when my body was consuming a protein that it couldn't break down, it was triggering that INSR polymorphism, that insulin receptor gene for me, because I have it. And especially given my familial history, it was tanking it. And what I will tell you is during my own personal journey, my my insulin, which was always at two to three to four, which is exactly where it's supposed to be, jumped to 17. So I became insulin resistant and my body was being flooded with, it, with insulin, which because I'm, my body's so metabolically flexible, it's just taking it into my cells and it was making me dangerously hypoglycemic. Managed it through my secret sauce, as I call it. However, every time I consumed a non-wild meat, beef in particular, because I won't eat chicken and I haven't eaten it for five years, my body had an almost immediate impact. So I have personal anecdotal evidence. Also, my client base over time has developed this mounting evidence of anecdotal evidence regarding amyloid-based 
foods that are tripping and genetic expression that is very disfavorable. And insulin has been really, really hit through this pandemic. Through so let's, go ahead. I'd like to expand on that because what, what's really interesting is people think, oh, well, she's not eating any sugar and she's gaining weight and you're hypoglycemic. So you would think, oh, well, you're going to lose weight, right? But it's that overshooting of insulin is a fat storing hormone. Too much insulin is dropping the blood sugar, but it's also causing the, the body to hold on to the weight. Absolutely. It is the fat storage hormone and it'll be stored around the middle belly primarily, which then is a marker for cardiac risk. Now, that weight gain was completely restabilized when I was able to understand the why, and it wasn't sugar for sugar. And even my my functional doctor who I love, they were like, oh, take, take a glucose tab because post-lunch, my blood sugar in their office was 52. Okay, so my my blood sugar, 52 after having lunch. I should have been 102 right. because yeah. I had to eat it or, or more, 140. But the glucose tab would have tanked me because sugar for sugar was not the answer. What it was, was I needed a pre-peptide that I created a combo platter and how to do that. And now after some time has passed, are you still taking that? And are you still having that response or have you overcome it? I've really overcome it. I will say that when I feel, I'll just check my blood sugar. My, my continuing glucose monitor, I just took it off because I was on, I, I, I had a, an event that I needed not to wear it. Mm -hmm. um, but I generally always feel like this is one of the critical markers for us to understand on the daily because you can manage it based on just what yeah, the feedback yeah. mechanism, it's a biomarker that's super, super important. I will say 90% of the time, uh, more than that, 95% of the time, I'm totally fine. And then I just manage what are my best foods, what are not my best foods. I find that I assimilate seafood too much, too fast. So mm -hmm. because there's a lot of zinc and selenium and seafood and zinc also helps usher insulin into the cells. So I have to be careful with my zinc right now. Over zincing myself is going to cause a hypoglycemic event in me. Interesting. Can we talk a little bit more about how insulin, when it's dysregulated, which it seems like it is happening with everybody because of um, the virus, how that plays with estrogen detox and also the thyroid? Yes. So insulin is considered, I consider it the centerpiece in the spoke of estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, cortisol, testosterone, DHT. And if you look at the polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's rooted in insulin resistance. And even males who have the MTHFR C677T gene, insulin resistance will create an over, um, over secretion of estrogen actually, and an, an inverse relationship between insulin and testosterone. So how does it affect the thyroid hormone? Well, there's three legs to the stool of the thyroid hormone. It's insulin, cortisol, and estrogen. And when those are being out of balance, it's going to create something called the thyroid binding globulin, which what it does is it interrupts the, the transmission of these thyroid hormones into the cell. And it confuses many doctors because they'll look at your thyroid numbers and they'll say, oh, you're absolutely normal, but you're not getting them into your cells or your fat malabsorption. You're not converting that T4 to T3, which is 60% is converted in the liver. So it has a direct impact on thyroid hormone. And then when we think of insulin as a pre -pept as a peptide necessary that we have amino acid utilization, which means we better freaking break down our proteins to convert them into amino acids so we can manage that glucose metabolism, it can get back to protein. So it gets back to the spike protein, which gets back to amyloids, which gets back to we need not to eat amyloid rich foods. I, I can't shout it enough from the rooftops. We are seeing so much in my practice. And these, these, the thing is, these amyloids are tripping viral loads. We know when you look at the, at the history in the, over these last two years, we're having a resurgence of the Epstein-Barr virus, the cytomegalovirus, the varicella virus, the IgG, which is a reactivated viral load. If those numbers are high, it's been linked in the clinical literature. And of course, in all of our clinical outcomes to Epstein-Barr, to ulcerative colitis, to rheumatoid arthritis to Bell's palsy. <laughs> There's so to all the itises. And I will tell you, Sarah, what's so fascinating. Yesterday was a really beautiful day in our practice because 
we'd had a, a young man who came to us. He was six, seven and had, was down to 120 pounds. He had bleeding ulcerative colitis, no, no anti, um, um, no uh, biologic, no steroid would help him. We realized we were able to discern it was a reactivation of a viral load. In his case, varicella in the lower colon. Within, within three weeks, he'd gained 16 pounds. We saw him as a follow-up. Now he's gained 50 pounds wow. in five months. He's completely in remission and he's totally wild. He knows what to eat and he doesn't. If he doesn't, if he doesn't follow the plan, things change. And we saved his colon. They were going to resect his colon. That was the only answer. We had another young lady here yesterday. After in this environment, in this two-year span, a woman who had zero issues with her gut became celiac and ulcerative colitis. They also put her on a biologic, no, no avail. She's now in full remission through our work. And this young lady had not had a period in 200 days. Since she started working with us, her period has regulated. And she will no, no longer be celiac either. It's she's on her way to be able to ma modulate wheat. Why? Because of a viral reactivation. So we can't feed these beasts through an amyloid burden or through sulfur impairment metabolisms where we're trying to manage a healthy environment and it's tripping other genes that are then disrupting our insulin metabolism and our protein metabolism and our fat metabolism and our oxalate metabolism. So I'm really, I'm really very, very um, staunch about this, where it's just non-negotiable. It's really non-negotiable. If we want to be healthy in this environment, we better eat our genetic blueprint and our current state of health. Absolutely. And I want to just touch on um, my own daughter, who doing great. Terry has done amazing things for her. And she went off to camp for four weeks this summer, rowing camp, and she, um, of course, had to eat dorm food, right? And she did her very best. But of course, what do they serve there? They're not serving duck and, and elk and deer and <laughs> lamb and bison. Are you kidding me? At her very best, she would go, she would maybe get to go to Whole Foods and have some salmon, maybe. But there was a lot of turkey. She really tried to stay away from the chicken. Um, she did her best she, and she had had a little rise in food poisoning and was nauseous before she had gone and we thought we corrected it. She goes and she comes back and this girl is honestly my hero because she just told me, yeah, I've been, I'm still nauseous. I'm still mm -hmm. nauseous and I just live with it and lightheaded and, and I'm sitting here going, the things that you're going to do in the world when you actually feel 100% are going to be amazing because you are functioning so well when you're not feeling great. Anyways, food poisoning came up on her again. And she said, well, I don't understand. Is this the same food poisoning that I had four months ago? And I said, no, it's not like that. So maybe you can dive into it's it's not that she necessarily ate food poisoning it's what is happening in her the gut pathogens taking over so maybe you can really emphasize that well food poisoning is generally as a result of a protozoa or a or a worm there in and giardia which is a protozoa that lives in water which is really found in salad bars and 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 so many sushi they've got all trichinomas there's a whole there's a whole host of parasitic interesting names that we can speak to so what happens is the parasites actually feed on protein and they make us protein malabsorbed and so and parasites also have a life cycle of 30 days and that's we know that in the full moon actually we even if someone has gone through our parasitic anti-parasitic protocol we tell them to take their anti anti-parasitics for the next three full moons because the ovas of those eggs will be re they come out <laughs> they come out during the full moon and so what's so fascinating is if we're protein malabsorbed we're actually feeding every pathogenic load because pathogens feed on that the actual the, the parasites feed on our tissue they feed on protein and so when it's in when our protein can't be digested they are fortified yeah. So real quick, we're going to take a short commercial break and we're, we're only going to have a few more minutes left with Terry, but we'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta, the owner of Accelerated Health Products. And today we have Terry Cochran back. Um, Terry, can you talk about going into the flu season, how this will change the way we eat and maybe some things that we got away with over the summer um, that maybe in the fall we shouldn't be be um, focusing on? So really important about the flu season is in the past, we tend to go to elderberry as a viral modulator for flu, the influenza. Here in the, in the, in the pandemic environment, buyer beware because elderberry is going to increase interleukin-6, which is an inflammatory cytokine. So please, 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 first and foremost, do not take elderberry as your course of action for protecting against the flu. Okay. So as the seasons change, first of all, here in the mid Atlantic, we're going into mold season as the leaves fall, those leaves are carrying mold in them. So we have to change the way we eat by, even if you were able to tolerate mushrooms. So the, the mold moldy foods that we talk about like mushrooms and peas and pea protein, peanuts, of course, uh, many nuts that uh, contain mycotoxins. And then those oxalate rich foods, which then build mold have to be either limited or off the table altogether. We also have to look at in the fall and as we're moving into closed quarters that we keep, we keep our mucous membranes optimally satisfied from an immunological perspective. And how do we do that? Well, I love your accelerated scalar silver. I am telling you, I am, I was just in Aspen this weekend. I was spraying it on, I was at a rugby game with all these guys who like to beat themselves up and I was spraying it at all their injuries, but I carry it with me and why, especially when I travel because the mucous membranes are exposed. So I put it in my ears, I put it in my nose. Actually, silver, colloidal silver has been known to be really, really phenomenal for the eyes, which is another mucous membrane. I actually had a client, I was able to resolve a, a bacterial sty by silver alone. Yeah. So silver everywhere, folks, and especially <laughs> in your throat. And then I, I take it, I take it prophylactically or especially when I travel. So that's another very, very important solution. How do we eat differently to manage flu symptoms? We have to look to foods that are going to be really good for breaking down proteins. So what foods are those? Papaya, papain, it has digestive enzymes for breaking down protein. Pineapple, if you don't have a mold issue or a sugar issue, is really fantastic because it has bromelain. Bromelain is another enzyme to break down protein. We look to sea salt, your salt that you were talking about, really important as an emulsifier. Why? Because these pathogens hide in this biofilm, which is fat-based. So we need emulsifiers like sea salt and bile salts and betaine, if you don't have an oxalate issues that will help with um, bile synthesis to break down fat. So all of those are highly important. Vitamin C is really important as an adrenal stabilizer. There have been many clinical studies on vitamin C. It's on its viral modulating properties. Uh, we know that serapeptase as a proteolytic enzyme, there's been some lit clinical literature around its ability to break down biofilm. And it has some clinical literature uh, in the world of how it might uh, be strong against some spike proteins. So those elements, silver, salt, <laughs> S, so I, the, you know, this uh, S cubed, silver, <laughs> salt, serapeptase, and then those 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 foods that are rich in those enzymes and really collapsing and minimizing those foods that are high in mold and mycotoxin, which will lower immune system response. And again, really don't do elderberry. Stay away from elderberry, folks. It's it, it's in the literature. And I think we, we did a um, we actually put a an Instagram post on it and I shared the clinical literature in the post on don't do that. <laughs> Not now. Awesome. Well, I also I want to I want to end on the 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 topic that's so easy to talk about, but a lot harder to put into practice, and that's managing stress. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. the thing that we're not eating, but they can change and disrupt our bodies in the way we process things that can disrupt our insulin and our cortisol and everything that. So maybe you can talk about how stress um, when it's out of hand is going to cause um, major health issues physically and gut issues and, you know, all of the things that we're talking about. Absolutely. Well, uh, Sarah, you know that I call stress the dirty cupcake. So it's like eating a cupcake, a dirty cupcake every hour on the hour, because it is a slow drip of the stress hormones of cortisol and epinephrine are also not only do they disrupt insulin and fat metabolism and hormone metabolism, but they also open up the tight junctions of our very, very important gut lining, which makes us more permeable, which lowers our immune system. And so Mark, Dr. Mark Hyman has been known to, uh, for his, his comment around the fact that 95% of disease states start with the stress hormone. The, and it's not an immediate stress hormone that we were built from our Chilean brains to fight or flight in the moment, because that's actually protective. It's the slow drip of the everyday stressors that we live with that becomes the dirty cupcake and the fire starter. And you know, Sarah, that I have terrorism. So I'm always, I'm always trying to give your audience things that they can relate to, right? So how do we manage that stress? Well, my personal, my personal daily mantra is I'm always checking in with my body. When I start in the morning, how am I feeling? Am I feeling out of alignment? If I'm feeling out of alignment, what is it that's making me feel out of alignment? There's a lot of crunch in our universe right now, right? Things are, we're having a lot of crunchy days. There's a lot of, in our in our world, there's a lot of specific situations that we're having to live with, manage, overcome, then live with again. It's like a spin cycle. But the mind is so powerful, Sarah, and we signal to the cells and we signal to the genes with our thinking. And even though the world around us and our circumstantial situations may be super crunch, the way that our body responds to the super crunch is will make a difference between an immune system that can withstand almost anything and an immune system that can't. And so it's really about am I out of balance? How do I put myself into alignment? Okay, no one or no thing can take my power unless I give it up. And when I give away my power, my immune system goes whoop. And so why would I do that? Yes, I may have the right to be indignant or offended or shocked or super sad. And we can have those emotions in the moment. And I'm not saying don't feel them, but then don't carry them with you like a 50 pound bag throughout your day, days, and weeks, and months, because that becomes the constant drip. Get yourself back in balance. Have the experience of the emotion so you can process it. And then think of something else that makes you happy. Music is really important. Scent of the all the senses that we have. Scent is 5,000 times more acute than any other one of our senses. Mm. I love rose oil. It is a beautiful scent or rose water for those of you that are fat malabsorbed. I usually will fall asleep. I usually put rose water. I splash myself with rose water every night. That's the highest frequency of all the flower kingdom. Mm. Scents are very powerful. A, A sound or a visual that you can relate to that brings you to a place of peace music. I play music a lot. You know, the, the music of the Baroque period is amazing, but I also play earth, wind and fire you know, because <laughs> it makes me happy and I dance. So doing things that in the moment can shift us from this uh, state of an emotional response that may be very appropriate, but we don't want to carry it. And so yeah. stop, drop and roll, stop, drop and roll. You, you, you've, you've felt it. So now you got to stop it, stop it, you drop it and you drop it through doing something that will move the energy. And then you roll into a higher frequency with something that was going to elicit a memory that brings you back into balance. And always, I always tell myself, remember who you are. Remember who you are. You're not your circumstances. You are not your circumstances. And that's a very powerful statement. Absolutely. We all have our stressors and um, I don't necessarily want to change my or trade my basket with somebody else because I know my stressors. But I'm a mom of three. 
Yeah. I'm a wife. I've got my business. And if I cannot let things go, um, I would just be destroyed. And I, to be frank, in the last couple of days, I have been overwhelmed and my, my bandwidth is done. <laughs> and I have had to do those check-ins, Terry, and exactly what you're talking about. I'm going to put one foot in front of the other. I'm going to make sure I make time for self-care. Yeah make time for alone time away from my kids, away from my husband, away from my clients. The other tool that I have and, and my, my goal with this podcast, with my coaching is to give people control back over mm -hmm. their, their health um, and not depend on anyone. And, you know, mm -hmm. Terry is very in tune. She's a, she is an intuitive and not all of us are so in touch with that intuition that we all have innately. We all have it in us. Um, I use things like the Genius Insight app that's on my phone, and it tells me, Sarah, you are stressed out. It is not that you have a gut bug. It's that your adrenals are wiped out or whatever it is, and you didn't sleep. I have my aura ring. That aura ring is telling me, you've got to stop. Your readiness is not optimal. <laughs> and so these are little tools that you can use to check in with yourself and say, okay, I now have to put up the boundaries. And I love what Joe Dispenza says about living in emotion. That's fine. Um, having it for a couple days, it becomes a temperament. After a couple months, it becomes your personality. So you, what you're saying, Terry, is so true. You need to you need to feel it and live it for a moment, but then let it go and wash it off. And I, I literally envision like a waterfall washing all of the stress off of me when I'm caught up in those moments. Um, so we have just a couple minutes left. I want to make sure if is there anything else that you think the audience needs to hear today? Um, I really believe that right now, more than ever, it's really important that you don't follow any kind of protocol that says everyone must do this or everyone must do that. You may be lucky and you may fall into that category that works for you, but if you're not, you're going to be six months at least or worse behind and trying to catch up to even your baseline that you were even when the baseline was an imbalance. So really tune in understand that we're all different, understand that we're living in an environment where stress is inevitable. We're living in a very uncertain situation on a global level. And there's still the ability to live a very fulfilled life, even in this crunchy, crunchy time by understanding who we are, why we are and how we are and really taking our sovereignty back, bringing back our power. We're not powerless. We're so powerful. We're clearly so powerful. Amazing. And where can people find your awesome book um, and tell people what it what it's called and, and also your practice? Uh, the Wildatarian Diet, Living as Nature Intended. It's an amyloid free book. <laughs> and it really um, it's, it's found on Amazon, both in Kindle and on hard, hard copy. We have the Terry Cochran dot com uh, website, which is my uh, clinical practices. Where, that's where you can buy my supplements as well. We have the Global Sustainable Health Institute. I'm founder of that. This is where I do my advising, my teaching. We're, we're really hopeful to bring out the Cochrane Method in 2023. The pandemic threw us for a loop because we've been so incredibly busy. I tell, I, I threaten my my team. I'm going to put myself in a in a in a cave for five months so I can finish this. Uh, I want you so to. <laughs> I will be signing up for it. And also, you know, at Accelerated Health Products, you can find Terry supplements. The wild lights I take every day, the stress mover I take every day, the immune mover, they're amazing supplements and formulated to the T. As you can tell, Terry's um, personality, she puts she puts it into her supplements as well. So, Terry, thank you again. Um, your knowledge is immense and um, you truly are on the cutting edge. And I want to get your word out because there's so many people out there in our space that are spreading the wrong information. So thank you again for all of what you're doing. Of course. Very and, 
Thank you everybody else for joining us today. If I can help you with your health issues, you can contact me directly through the website, sarabantahealth.com. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products and my YouTube channel and over a hundred podcast channels under Accelerated Health Radio, including iHeartRadio, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Pandora, or whatever podcast platform you subscribe to. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I have live episodes every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern, and Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. Eastern. You don't need to remember. You just subscribe and it will notify you. And as you support Accelerated Health Products, I'm able to bring you this show and all of my amazing guests. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next week. Thanks, Thank you. Jerry. Bye. Bye.